Alarm bells are ringing for American homeowners as surging mortgage rates scare away buyers and declining prices terrorize sellers amid one of the most turbulent reversals seen since 2008. Real estate experts say the slump in the housing market is only going to get worse, and after seeing their equity shrink by over $1.5 trillion this year, Homeowners should prepare for an ugly 2023, they say, warning that property values are set to drop by double digits early next year. And after that happens, prices will overshoot downwards. That's what we're going to expose today. But before moving on, please support us with a thumbs up on this video and don't forget to subscribe. Air continues to seep out of the housing bubble, blown up by the Fed's artificially low interest rates in the wake of the health crisis. The ultra-low interest rates that made mortgages more affordable over the past decade also prompted home prices to jump almost 95% between the first quarter of 2013 and the second quarter of 2022, according to data released by the Dallas Fed. Roughly half of that growth took place between 2020 and 2022 was cheap credit, fiscal stimulus, and the rise of the work-from-home trend all led to demand for housing outpacing supply. In March 2020, the median price of an existing home was $280,700, according to the National Association of Realtors. By June 2022, that number had soared to $413,800, marking a stunning 47% increase in a span of only two years. Eric Lund, a principal economist at the conference board, notes that this impressive surge was even higher than the rise seen in home prices during the last bubble. It's true that U.S. homeowners should prepare for an ugly 2023, he warned. After years of underinvestment and suppressed supply, U.S. home prices rose an eye-popping 47% between January 2020 and June 2022, as low interest rates and the surge in remote work spurred demand. For comparison, in the lead-up to the housing downturn that started 16 years ago, prices were up by 30% over a comparable period, the expert explained. However, now it's clear that the demand boom that fueled the growth of the current bubble hasn't just fizzled out, but it's doing a 180 degree. Compared to a year ago, mortgage purchase applications are down 41%. There are actually fewer purchase applications now than at the bottom of the 2008 crash. All of that is thanks to the highest mortgage rates in two decades. Even some policymakers at the Federal Reserve are speaking out against the Fed's policies. Last week, Dallas Fed economist Enrique Martinez Garcia published a study exposing the worrying effect rising mortgage rates are having on housing demand. In the current environment, when housing demand is showing signs of softening, monetary policy needs to carefully thread the needle of bringing inflation down without setting off a downward house price spiral, a significant housing sell-off that could aggravate an economic downturn, he wrote. According to his estimates, home prices could fall 20%, and that could have a knock-on effect on inflation, economic growth, and the long-term health of the U.S. housing market, Martinez Garcia said. Plausible estimates of the direct impact on housing wealth suggest that a pessimistic scenario, with a real price correction of up to 20%, could shave as much as 0.5 and 0.7 percentage points from real personal consumption expenditures, he added, referring to the index that tracks spending on consumer goods. Such a negative wealth effect on aggregate demand would further restrain housing demand, deepening the price correction and setting in motion a negative feedback loop, he added. In other words, even the Fed acknowledges that a 20% drop in property values could eventually trigger an even bigger crash as conditions continue to deteriorate. 
but their estimates are still tame compared to how overvalued some markets are. The chief economist at KPMG, Diane Swank, predicts that we're easily going to see large double-digit declines, saying, I think 20% early next year is very conservative. We're already turning. Once you start the process of prices falling nationally, there is a self-fulfilling momentum to it because no one wants to catch a falling knife, Swank says. We're at very, very frothy levels right now. In such situations, prices do tend to overshoot to the downside, highlights James Knightley, the chief international economist at ING Bank. The truth is that the housing market was squeezed so high before and during the pandemic that it needs to face a significant correction to come back to sustainable levels. Even with recent declines in home prices, America is still in the largest bubble ever. At this point, pretty much everyone in the industry agrees that for prices to get back to their long-term trend, they would have to fall at least two times more than the Fed is suggesting. Today, prices are still higher than the previous peak reached in 2006. For affordability to come back to normal levels at current interest rates, housing prices have to decline more than 40%, argues Vitaly Katzenelson, CEO and Chief Investment Officer at Investment Management Associates. In some markets, such as Austin, Texas, where home prices climbed 93.5% over the last two years, or Northport, Florida, where prices soared 83.4% since 2020, according to data compiled by Business Insider, a 40% crash still wouldn't be enough. A lot more pain is coming for 57% of U.S. housing markets that are overvalued by 50% or more. Overall, this is the most worrying housing market outlook since 2007-2008, with markets poised between the prospect of modest declines and much steeper ones, pointed out Adam Slater, a lead economist at consultancy firm Oxford Economics. For Redfin CEO Glenn Kelman, the housing slump will continue to add downward pressure on home sales for the foreseeable future. The problem with demand is that housing has become unaffordable. From October 2020 to October 2022, the monthly payment for an American family buying a median-priced home increased by 71%. For that same family to rent a median-priced apartment, the monthly payment increased by 24%, still far faster than income growth. The rate of household formation in late 2022 was less than one quarter of what it was at its summer 2020 peak. It'll remain that way until the cost of housing declines substantially, Kelman says. With deeper price declines on the horizon, more bad news is coming for homeowners. The historic run-up in home prices over the past couple of years actually gave homeowners record amounts of new home equity. But since May, the accelerating correction led them to lose about $1.5 trillion in home equity, Black Knight data shows. This means that the average borrower has lost $30,000 in equity, and more losses are about to occur. In the hardest markets such as Las Vegas, Miami, Los Angeles, Phoenix, Tampa, San Diego, homeowners have to spend twice the long-term average amount of median household income to make their monthly payments. That's why home sales began dropping sharply, and that's why prices have been following suit. In October, home sales declined for the ninth straight month as higher interest rates and soaring inflation have kept buyers on the sidelines. This has marked the longest streak of declining sales ever recorded, and that's quite alarming considering that the new housing crash is just getting started. Redfin reported that home sales plunged 32.1% last month, the worst year-over-year -year collapse in the history of the United States. In a statement, 
Redfin Economics Research Lead Chen Zhao said that the Fed's actions to curb inflation are causing the housing market to slow at a pace not seen since the financial crisis. Meanwhile, economic and financial analyst Wolf Richter argues that this plunge in sales is a sign that potential sellers and buyers are in a standoff. Many potential sellers refuse to accept reality and lower their prices to where the sellers are. Instead, they're thinking, and this too shall pass, and they're hoping or praying for a Fed pivot or for a miracle and don't even put their home on the market or pull it off the market after not getting any traffic at their aspirational asking price. But buyers have lost interest at the current prices, he stresses. The reversal has already happened. Demand is set to flatten in the next few months. As noted by economist Ian Shepherdson of Pantheon Macroeconomics, who recently told clients that a floor is coming for the U.S. housing market. The crash home prices is expecting to accelerate in the months ahead as plunging demand ripples through the market, the economist warns. Prices have to fall substantially in order to restore equilibrium, Shepherdson wrote in an analysis in late October. Already, the median price of all types of homes dropped for the fourth month in a row last month and is now down 8% from the peak in June. Official data reveals that the 8% decline was the largest drop for this four-month period since the last downturn. During the last housing market crash, millions of homeowners found themselves deeply underwater on their mortgages as home prices rapidly collapsed. Fannie Mae's data shows that since January, the number of underwater mortgages has doubled. Needless to say, if home prices plunge by 40% or more in 2023 and beyond, we'll once again have vast numbers of Americans that owe far more on their homes than they are currently worth. In 2008 and 2009, numerous households that have found themselves in such a situation simply decided to walk away from their mortgages. If the same thing were to happen again, that would spark unprecedented consequences, according to a new study released by Oxford Economics. This time around, unemployment will be a key factor determining how low prices will go. A sharp increase in joblessness could lead to forced sales and foreclosures, where steep discounts are common, the study noted. Housing downturns come with nasty consequences. Slater, the consultancy's lead economist, told CNN Business earlier this month. We're in the early period in quite a clear downturn now. The only real question is how steep and how long it's going to be. Given that the unemployment rate has already started to go up, climbing 3.7% in October, the chances of witnessing a disaster even worse than 2008 are very real. More and more businesses are announcing layoffs as consumer spending slows down. A decisive increase in unemployment is a very big danger for housing markets, Slater continued. A series of other factors could combine to make this crash the largest and most devastating we've ever experienced. And repercussions could be global. An additional negative factor compared to the global financial crisis is that the Chinese housing market is also in a downturn, The Economist explains. So, rather than offsetting the impact on world output of a global housing downturn, as was the case after the GFC, the Chinese housing sector is contributing to the slump. We have to keep in mind that the last housing bubble burst extended for years after the Fed started its interest rate repression and quantitative easing in late 2008 to bail out the banks. Markets didn't bottom out until 2011. Back then, the economy was in far better shape and there was almost no inflation. Now, we're struggling with raging inflation and the Fed is trying to remove the fuel for this inflation before it becomes a much bigger problem. This means that the central bank will not cut rates and 
try to save financial institutions or issue more fiscal stimulus to prevent a collapse. This time, there is no Fed put and no Fed bailout. In fact, this time, the housing crash won't take down the banks as it happened before. Today, the banks no longer own the mortgages. The entire industry has changed. Most of the mortgages are securitized into mortgage-backed securities by entities such as Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which are under government conservatorship, or by Ginnie Mae and the Veterans Administration, which are government agencies, and the government guarantees the mortgages. And these mortgage-backed securities are sold to investors such as pension funds, insurance companies, and bond mutual funds all around the globe, as notes Richter in his blog WolfStreet.com. That is to say, if mortgage credit blows up again, if there's another huge wave of foreclosures, that won't hit the banks. It'll mostly hit taxpayers mostly, and investors to a lesser extent. Simply put, it'll be our money on the line. Mortgage defaults and foreclosures creeping up again. Unemployment rates are ticking up, and consumer spending is drying up. All the elements of a perfect storm are already in place. Now, all we can do is watch this slow motion train wreck playing before our eyes. Thank you for watching. What do you think? We look forward to your comments below this video. Please subscribe. We'll see you next time.